I think we're ready to make a start. Everyone can hear me okay, yep? Yep, okay. So can Tableau software really change your life? At the end of this, I'd appreciate if you can just complete the evaluation survey. It helps us to improve the presentations for next time. So if you can spare a minute doing that, be really, really grateful if you can do so. So I'm Paul Chapman. I'm the Global Director of Business Intelligence and Technology for Jones Lang LaSalle. I tweet at cheeky underscore chappy. I have a blog at thatdataviz.com. And I actually wrote a blog about this presentation, so if you want to find out more after, because it's quite fast paced, you can go on my blog site and find out more details about it there. So I'm going to start with some numbers. 45, that's my age, and I'll put that into context as we go along. I know I'm quite baby faced, and I don't look that old. Actually, this was me at three and a half years of age, almost the same age as my daughter now, and about the same height, and probably about the same amount of hair, actually. So I'm gonna take you through 213 slides in the next 15 minutes. So it's gonna be quite fast paced and whistle stopped. 84 is gonna be the first slide when I talk about Tableau, but we'll get there when, uh, when we get there. I'm gonna take you through just one Tableau dashboard. So with that, we had better get started. So three, that's the number of distinct careers that I have had. Retail, accountancy, and business intelligence. My career started pushing trolleys in Tesco's. Moved into store, worked my way up to a store manager position. I've always been seen in store as that data guy. Always looked at numbers in a different way. That got me a role in head office where I was a finance analyst. I had one brief, but it was quite a difficult one. Show the numbers, show the numbers, really difficult. It was hard because the systems we had were very basic. They ran off of a green screen input system. But I was still able to build a graph like this, which I was really proud of. Although my manager pointed out that it was really hard to read, it was too busy, not really visualization best practices. I didn't at that time understand the data ink ratio. Everything I did, I made bold and black. I thought that was a great way of visualizing my data. But the work I did, did get me onto the radar. I found an Excel plugin and I was able to build a tree map. Anyone use tree maps? Hands up. Few people, that's good, okay. So I'd seen one on a BBC science program. I thought it was a great way of visualizing a large amount of data. Up until this point, I'd had to build an Excel chart and scroll all the way from left to right to be able to show all the data. So at the time, a tree map was seen as very forward thinking. Now, fast forwarding a few years, I then became an accountant for an orange UK based airline. In fact, my office was in a hangar at the airport. It was just around in there. And that was the view from my desk looking out, which was very noisy when engine tests were going on. Not very good for conversations. So I was in charge of network planning. We had lots and lots of Excel tables and we had some terrible visualizations just like these ones. But it was a new opportunity for me to build, use tree maps to visualize 650 routes across 26 bases in a single view. So I convinced the business that there had to be a better way than an Excel plugin to do what it was I wanted to be doing. So I had a look online and I found a Wikipedia definition of business intelligence. And I'll read this out to you, it's quite fast paced. So the definition of business intelligence is the set of strategies, processes, applications, data, technologies, and architectures which are used to support the collection, analysis, presentation, and dissemination of business information. So that's exactly how we all describe what we do, right? That's exactly how we say it. So I examined a product from a company called Hive that built tree maps natively. The US Army was using it to visualize their troop deployments. And also on the board of directors, they had this man. Anyone know who that chap is? No, it's Dr. Ben Schneiderman. He actually invented the tree map. So Ben Schneiderman was on their board. 
And he always said this, which I thought was a really good quote. A picture is worth a thousand words. An interface is worth a thousand pictures. So Hive was partially useful for what we wanted to do at the airline, but I still felt there had to be better tools available, more visualizations than just a tree map for showing what we wanted to do. So we settled on, anyone guess? Tool called Omniscope. We're not on slide 90 just yet. So does anyone use Omniscope? No? Okay, that's good. So they're a UK based team. They actually use tree maps in their process as well, um, but you could do other charts. And actually they could use maps, which was really useful for an airline. They also had their own built-in ETL and mapping functionalities. You could do network charts, and that was what their ETL. So for us, it was a win-win opportunity. My CFO was very, very impressed. So he gave me some budget, allowing us to build a demo. We worked with a partner to build that demo using two years worth of our booking data. 300 million rows was in that data set. Although when the partner presented back to us, they also used another tool. Can anyone guess what that tool was? You're now all not so sure because no one wants to put their hand up. We're now on slide 84, it was Tableau software. It was version seven. Did anyone start using Tableau with version seven? Ah, a couple of people, okay. So it was good, it brought new features to us like area charts, the ability to fill a map, couldn't do that before that point, and a redesigned show me functionality. Although when I looked at it, tree maps didn't have those, ETL didn't have those either. And I needed a server to share my outputs with people. So we actually ended up plugging away with Omniscope. We didn't really go full in with Tableau at that point. But at that point, we started a new project looking at allocated seating to sit on the aircraft. Up to this point, it would be a scrum for wherever you would sit on the plane. You'd run on board, elbows out to get your seat. It actually, by bringing in allocated seating, it had a huge effect on turnaround times, customer satisfaction, large driver of cost into the business was removed, and it wasn't very good from a, a, a marketing point from an airline. So it was an opportunity for me to demonstrate some new tools and showing people who actually chose to buy a seat where they would sit on a plane and a different way of visualizing rather than a standard bar or a line chart. So I wanted to bring it to life. I wanted to use animation to show the build up of seats. So what we ended up with was something a bit like this. And when I presented the final visualization, people sat forward in their seats, came off of their mobiles and wanted to look because they'd not seen anything quite like this before. At this point, my inbox then started filling up with emails from Tableau. They had released 8.0 at this point, which had new features, including tree maps. I was a very happy chappy at this point. So we bought a trial license or two. We couldn't get IT support, so we installed a server under the desk. I think it's probably still there today, tucked away and squirreled, so don't tell IT about that one. And we brought in a Tableau consultancy company to help us build fast prototypes, and you may have heard of them, the Information Lab. I started to fall in love with Tableau. Compared to Omniscope, Tableau felt modern. It felt fast. It allowed me to iterate, to follow a creative process, start messy and unpredictable, but then fail fast, move on, explore hunches and ideas, follow data, hone in on what that data was telling me. At this point, we was on a journey, didn't really know where the destination was. It wasn't structured and orderly. I didn't happen to know those precise values. But this is where our innovation stemmed from. Company changing ideas were discovered at this point, and through exploration, we could shift the business's perspective. So with the Information Lab, we trained 15 people across the business. No ROI, no expectations. It was just a go and fill your boots, go and use the tool and see what you can do with it. So they started to evangelize in their own areas of the business as well. And the CFO then asked me to lead a program on bringing BI properly into the business. It was a led by finance function, not by IT, which was quite critical. IT wasn't happy about this, but we felt this was the modern way that BI was being deployed across organizations. We also brought in Deloitte to help. 
And I attended a number of Gartner summits, which I find really useful to help me build my strategy. And in the early days, it helped us look at the analyst of the future and delivering self-service BI to the masses. So we built within EasyJet a BI center of excellence. I was then invited to present at the Tableau sales kickoff meeting in 2015. This was the view I had at SKO. There was a thousand people working for Tableau then. I got to present to all of them. But it showed me the growth of the organization, helped me understand it was the right company for us and me to be partnering with. So I presented the Tableau journey at EasyJet. I became known for developing world-class standards and best practices, starting with simple things like defining your organization's color palette, providing guidelines of which chart types you should be using, when to use color and actually when not to use color, how to have a consistent dashboard layout for your audiences, have an information tab, learn through muscle memory. So we showed a demo of this to our board and our chief executive. And at the end, the chief exec sat forward and said, this is a great demo, but when can we see it with our own data? And I was able to say, actually, Caroline, this is our data. We've looked through 300 million rows of our own EasyJet data. So our peers described what we were doing as world class. And Tableau could see my passion and enthusiasm and asked me to help restart the London Tableau user group which I did with this reprobate and current Zen master, Paul Benoob. You may have heard of him. And it introduced me to the Tableau community. Never seen a passionate bunch quite like it. So I also co-lead run data at events like this and at the uh, US conferences, 5.30 a.m. starts with about 300 people coming out and running and talking data and Tableau. And then that brings me on to Tableau Public, which is a fantastic resource where you can learn through what other people have done to download and reverse engineer dashboards and workbooks and see what they have there. I was named a Tableau ambassador in January 2016 for the work I do in the community because I tweet a lot around Tableau and data visualization, data visualization, but I also use Tableau as a place to learn, see what's going on, best practices, new ideas, new functionality coming out in the tools. I write blogs to share those experiences and also teach data visualization best practices, both internally and externally. This introductory session I've delivered to over a thousand people now. And there are a number of people in the community I now call very close friends. So at the start of 2016 though, I was thinking about a new role. I had a four hour daily commute involving one of these next to a smart car for scale. I had two of these, one of these, and I had to do that twice a day. And I've also got one of these. I've got a five-year-old daughter going on 16 who I wanted to spend more time with. 20 hours commuting means I miss a school run. I sometimes miss bath and bedtime. She's also a budding community member. She completed her recent maths homework in Tableau as well at five. But my CV had not been updated since time began. So I wanted to modernize it and make it a more visual process. And mainly through word of mouth, people heard that I might have become available. It helped me introduce to something that I didn't know existed at the time, the unadvertised jobs market. Four was the number of offers that I received. Three of those were not advertised, including JOL. So in March, um, an email was sent to Tableau asking them if they knew a data rock star, hello, uh, who could help them uh, take them on their Tableau journey. So I had several interviews with the CEO, the COO, who then told me, you're hired. So the fireworks were going, the champagne was flowing, and I was the global director of business intelligence and technology. What does that even mean? My wife describes what I do as a bit like Chandler Bing from Friends. Nobody ever really understands business intelligence unless you're in it. So to my wife, it meant we was earning more money. She was able to buy the Tesla that she'd always wanted. Remember though that I still drive one of these, so something's not quite right there. There's the scale of one car next to the other. Then the reality though sank in of what that really meant to me. Am I good enough for the role? The reality though often looks more like the right hand side than it does when you're compared to what others know. You really do know more. So what does the role involve? For us, it involves improving compliance, reducing cost, increasing productivity, and we deliver that through collaboration. Three quarters of my team's day is spent not talking to people they've never met before. 
And I always use a quote from Jed Bartlett when a new person wants to join the team. Margaret Mead was originally the uh, author. He says, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. It's because it's the only thing that ever has. So my team has to perform at a level as if they're working together at the same bank of desks, in the same office as one coherent unit, becoming a high performing team with the added challenge of working independently of each other, only communicating through WebEx, Skype or Teams. So we had to build a three year plan to deliver ROI into everything that we do. So that was great for JOL, but I also wanted to build a personal roadmap to become a chief data officer. Why? Well, Gartner predicts that by 2020, 80% of large organizations will have an office of a CDO. Here's Alan Duncan sharing that wisdom at a Gartner conference. He also loves that picture I took of him. And I want to be one of them. So can Tableau really change your life? Well, it depends. We've heard that a lot. If you have the passion, you're willing to keep learning, you build and lead a great team, you embrace, learn from, and contribute to the community, then yes, you can. So I promised you at the start I was gonna take you through 213 slides. I now have. There's one more thing I just wanna show you. I promised you one more dashboard. Let me just take you into that a moment. Okay, if I can move the mouse. What I just want to share with you here is just some of the salary opportunities that I've embraced as time's gone on. So this is where it started in 94. Worked with Tesco's full time, became a store manager, moved into head office, small pay bump as you go up there. At this point, I moved into becoming an accountant. Here's where I discovered the tree map. Then as time went on, I moved into head of strategic planning. I then moved into travel lodge as head of finance. Then a small blip going into Sainsbury's. Moved into network planning with EasyJet. Introduced Tableau, BI lead, COE. Here's JOL. Here's how the salary is increasing. And here's where I'm predicting it's going to go as a chief data officer. So I've seen a 67% increase in my salary since I started using Tableau. And by 2020, I have a forecast that it would have increased 200% from where I started my journey. So that's me. Thank you ever so much for coming along. And if anyone wants any questions, please come and see me at the end. Thank you ever so much.